Welcome back. This session is about metacarbo phalangeal joint biomechanics. Of course, we are dealing with the hand biomechanics and, of, and we have completed the biomechanics of uh, carpo metacarpal joint. And right now we move on to the biomechanics of uh, which joint, the MCP joint, often known as the metacarpo phalangeal joint. And of course, you know that we will be discussing only about the fingers except the thumb, which we'll discuss later. So we'll be focusing about the metacarbophalangeal joint of the four fingers. Uh, throughout this discussion, we'll try to understand what is MCP joint, how is it formed, what type of joint it is, what are the degrees of freedom, which are the ligaments of the joint and more importantly we will focus on a concept known as molar plates or uh, palmar plates which is uh, very significant for your exam they ca that can be asked as a short note question and finally we'll see the motions of a uh, uh, mcp joint it will be a very small discussion and let us break mcp joint into small parts <music> often I tell when we discuss about any joint we need to how uh, we need to discuss joint under different headings we need to break it into small headings which definitely simplifies it so the first one whether you are getting any joint in your exam or someone ask you always mention about the articular surface of that joint so in MCP joint, I know that uh, you are very uh, thorough with what are uh, MCP joint, which are the MCP joint. Oh, definitely, these are the MCP joints over here. Okay, so which are the articular surface of MCP joint? You know that this is the metacarpal and this is the head of the metacarpals. So the head of the metacarpals and this is a phalanx, proximal phalanx and the proximal phalanx has a base over here. So the base of the proximal phalanx and head of the metacarpals are the one that can articulate to form which type of joint? The MCP joint. So in MCP joint, if you more specifically, if you go on to that in MCP joint, we have the head of the metacarpals this one, this head articulating with the base of the proximal phalanx, not the middle phalanx, not the distal phalanx, only the proximal phalanx. And it is the head, not the base. Base of the metacarpals is articulating in CMC joint. So we have here the head articulating with the base of the proximal phalanx. So that is one of the most important things that you remember about the articular surface of MCP joint. And let's see from this diagram more clearly about the articular surface. This diagram you can clearly see that the articular surface of the MCP joint is marked along with that the CMC joint is marked, interphalangeal joint which we'll discuss later that's also marking. Just look at the MCP joint you can see that the metacarpal head uh, uh, relatively a larger head is articulating with the base of a metacarpophalangeal joint. And the next heading that we need to uh, look is what type of joint it is. Okay, Can you look at this diagram and just tell, uh, tell me what type of joint this would be? Huh? Is it a plane joint? Of course, no, it's, it cannot be a plane joint, right? Is it a ball and socket joint? No, it's not a ball and socket joint. What type of joint it can be? Any guess? What type of joint it can be? Any guess? If you are able to identify the joints from the diagrams, uh, it's very, uh, I think you are thorough with that concept. Definitely, it's a condyloid type of joint. So it's a condyloid type of joint and condyloid joints has a two degrees of freedom. What are the degrees of freedom in your hand, MCB joint? That's a flexion and extension. Flexion and extension. The next moment is abduction and adduction. Abduction and adduction. Don't look at my fingers or IP joint, just look at the MCP joint. The moment is abduction, adduction, flexion, extension. So the joint is MCP joint is a condylate type of joint, and the degrees of freedom are what type of degrees are there? Uh, that is a two degrees of freedom. That is the which one? Uh, flexion, extension, and abduction, adduction. Right? Yes. Now we need to look on to the next classification or next part in that that is like uh, the ligaments or any accessory structures of course. What are the ligaments that can stabilize the metacarbophalan? See this is like uh, uh, the knee joint then uh, uh, we have uh, what type of uh, ligaments should be here. One is on this side, one is on this side. So collateral ligament should be the 
we don't call it medial and lateral collateral we can call it radial and ulnar collateral ligament because this one is to the radial side this one is to the ulnar side so we have two collateral ligaments and of course we know there is another ligament which is a, a very common to the mcp joint that is a on the volar side a deep transverse metacarpal ligament which we have discussed from the cmc joint so the deep transverse metacarpal ligaments and two collateral ligaments are the ligaments that are trying to stabilize this joint our mcp joint so uh, just look at the uh, once again uh, we discussed on the following headings one is the articular surface which is formed by the uh, what do you call which is formed by the head of the metacarpals with the base of the proximal phalanx okay and the type of the joint which is a condylar type of joint and then degrees of freedom any condylar joint has a two degrees of freedom what are that flexion extension and abduction adduction and then ligaments so ligaments of the condylar joint are collateral ligaments you can think on it's condylar and it should be collateral uh, we have an elbow collateral ligaments we have knee collateral ligaments so it should be collateral ligaments uh, and radial and unknown collateral ligaments and of course the deep transverse metacarpal ligament and and finally, accessory structures. Is there any accessory structure that can increase the congruency of this joint? Just for example, look at this diagram over here. Uh, you can see that uh, in this diagram, the head of the metacarpal is actually a larger one, right? And only a small part of the base is actually articulating with that. That means the joint is susceptible to a large amount of incongruency. So there should be some articular structure, some additional structure that should provide the stability. And there comes our, there comes our important question, that's a volar plates. Okay, volar plates or uh, palmar plates, right? So volar plates or palmar plate is important for your examinations and it's good that you understand that concept very easily. So it's nothing but uh, the term tells you that two things one is volar one is palmar that both are similar so it's not in the dorsal side it's just in the volar side okay so it's in the volar side now you need to know this is the mcp joint we are not possibly telling about the cmc ip joint so this should be in the mcp joint so in the volar side in the mcp joint you need to have some structure which is actually uh, known as the volar plates like this so we will have a structure over here uh, which is known as the volar plates. So it is only seen in the volar side or the palmar side. So there is some structure like this which is uh, uh, known as volar plates. So what are that? They are actually fibrocartilaginous structure. And remember some words give you some hints. So for example, fibrocartilage should, should bring to you something like a, a fibrocartilage are one of the strongest one and it can resist a large amount of tension forces, compressive forces and so on. So this one also does the same function so now you have a ligament or a volar plate over here which is a fibrocartilaginous in structure what will it do is that it will increase the concurrency of the joint definitely that is why we say it's an accessory structure so it increases the concurrency of the joint and now it is seen on this side it will prevent excessive hyperextension so it will prevent excessive hyperextension so these are some of the functions of the volar plates of the mcp joints so what is that it increases the uh, what you call concurrency it reduces the excessive hyperextension and there is an arch over this in this region that is the longitudinal arch so it supports the longitudinal arch so that are three basic function of your what type of volar plates now let's see the concept of volar plate. Just look at this diagram. You can see that exactly at the place where I draw in my hand, uh, I drew in my hand, you can see that there is a structure like a, a fibrocartilaginous structure which is attaching the base of a proximal phalanx to the metacarpal head. That convex shaped one over there is a metacarpal head and you can see that it is attached between both that structures. So such a structure which is present at the base of the proximal phalanx and the MCP joint or the MCP joint is known as what you call volar plates, often they are known as the palmar plates and they are what type of structure? They are fibrocartilaginous structure. Now if you go ahead you can see from this next diagram too the same thing that is the different structures are marked over here you can see that volar plate is marked proximal phalanx is marked this is just from the reverse order this is not actually proximal phalanx this should be metacarpal so i don't know why they missed that yeah okay uh, so uh, the, this um, diagram is actually about the volar plate which is existing between the IP joint so that diagram is correct so just understand the concept you can see that on the under surface in the volar side or palmar side you have a structure like uh, a plate like structure which is actually uh, doing some additional role of increasing the concurrency 
Now, if you look at this diagram, you can see that uh, it is actually arising from, uh, this is our proximal phalanx, right? So it is arising from the proximal phalanx. It is strongly attached to the proximal phalanx, okay? Remember, it is strongly attached to the proximal phalanx, but not attached to the uh, MCP joint. Uh, oh, sorry, the metacarpal. Actually, it blends with the capsule. So every joint has a capsule, right? So it blends with this capsule. So what is that peculiarity? It's not having a rigid attachment. Right? It's not having a rigid attachment. So it's flexible to move. It is flexible to move. And as a result, it can prevent uh, impingement of the structures. You, have, you know that there are a lot of uh, flexor tendons passing over here. So it will not prevent, uh, it will not cause the uh, impingement of that structures. So this molar plate. Now one additional function is that uh, like uh, when you go for extension, when you go for extension, what can happen is that the, uh, what do you call the proximal phalanx uh, may come out of the joint or the articular surface decrease. So you see that now the articular surface is up to here. Okay. Now when I'm increasing the extension, see that articular surface would actually increase. This is happening inside the joint. It would actually increase. So it is actually giving a greater amount of articular surface in contact with the metacarpal head even during extension. So you can consider the uh, volar plates or palmar plate as an extension of the distal end of the MCP, uh, the proximal pharynx itself. So you can consider this as an extension of the distal end of the proximal pharynx. So the concept is uh, not that tough. You don't need to feel it like that because you know that the, the, if this is the MCP, the, if this is the proximal pharynx end base, only this much is the articular surface. Now if I go for extension, what is happening is that there is no articular surface left over. So this one is actually attaching from the distal end of the proximal pharynx. From there it is coming down. So when uh, throughout this motion, there is some part of this one touching with the metacarpal head so it will actually increase the area of contact next one is that uh, you have some structure over here 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 right so you are placing something inside uh, your hand uh, or contacting some hard object this one will prevent the uh, impingement to the or damage to the flexor tendon so under through um, below that you have the tendons passing so it will prevent the damage to the tendons or it prevents the pain or impingement of that structures when you are handling a tough object etc so that are the functions of uh, your water plates once again increase the concurrency indirect support to the increases the support to the longitudinal arch limits hyperextension adds surface area in contact with the mcp head in extension and finally prevents impingement to the passing uh, flexor tendons etc so that is the concept of a uh, palmar plates remember just it's a fibrocartilaginous plates right and now there is one more thing that i need you to remember uh, you have the palmar plates over here we have the extensor tendon over here this one is the extensor tendon over here this one is the extensor tendon so there are some structures over here uh, which is attaching the water plates to the flexor tendon extensor tendons that is the known as the can you name the structure that is the sagittal bands so you have some structures over here which is linking this one to this extensor tendon so this is actually stabilized okay so the extensor tendon or extensor expansion is linked to the volar plates by some structures known as a sagittal band when you call sagittal band this is a sagittal plane so this is a frontal plane this is the sagittal plane so they lie in the sagittal plane the of the four it is known as a sagittal bands that may be an mcp question a structure which connects uh what you call volar plates into the extensor tendon or extensor hood or extensor expansion that is your such a little band. It was that a tough discussion? I don't think so. Just like this look some more diagrams. The diagram shows the same. This is a diagram where a volar plate is seen and as we told you FTP, FDS tendon is passing below that. And you can see that when this structure is over there, it will prevent damage to the tendons because pain, it would be very painful if the tendons of a muscle is uh, damaged. And this is a diagram of a deep transverse metacarpal ligament and it's a close association with the polar plates. I hope that is a fine, fine. And finally, we need to look at the ligaments. As I told you, the ligaments are collateral ligaments. The collateral ligaments are uh, a collateral ligament proper and accessory collateral ligament. So you know that there are two collateral ligaments. That is a radial collateral ligament, ligament and ulnar collateral ligament. So radial collateral ligament can be two. That is radial collateral ligament proper, radial collateral ligament accessory. 
Alnarcholactic ligament can be two, alnarcholactic ligament proper and alnarcholactic ligament accessory. And uh, an additional one is the deep transverse metacarpal ligament. I don't uh, suggest you how to study the origin insertion of the ligament. That's not needed. You just have to remember the names. And finally, about the range of motion. Any idea about the range of motion? The range of motion actually increases from a radial side to the ulnar side. For example, here the flexion is this much, 90 degree, whereas in uh, uh, you can see that from the little finger it is about 110 degree. So there is an increase in the flexion range from uh, uh, what you call radial side to the ulnar side. Here it is maximum 90 degree, here it is a 110 degree. Extension is often limited, but hyperextension is uh, seen in individuals and some people, <laughs> some of among us can actually test this one over here, which is actually hyperextension and it's a, a, a non-scientific method of uh, flexibility of the body. You might have seen your friends doing this one and telling, oh my god, I can do it. Can you do man? And no, 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 I cannot do it. <laughs> okay, so you are having lack of flexibility. So it is an indirect uh, or non-scientific way of uh, telling the flexibility of the body. Flexible people can, of course, do it. I cannot do it, right? And about the abduction erection range of motion, you can see from abduction erection range of motion is actually increasing from a ray ulnar side to the radius side. So from second and third fingers has a greater amount of abduction erection range of motion about 0 to 25 and little fingers has a less amount of range of motion. Clear? So that is the concept of a MCP joint and most importantly in this concept you have to remember about the voila place that is going to be asked not the MCP joint. Nobody is going to ask a MCP joint. So study about the voila place, look some more diagrams and uh, clear the concept. I hope that video was helpful for you. If it is, please uh, click the like button and if you haven't subscribed, kindly subscribe to our channel.